Hi everyone! Rolling Stones is back! Well, I just did, not too very long ago, a special weekend where I listened to three of their songs. And that was my first exposure, and I kind of jumped in with three all at once. My first exposure to the band. Well, I'm back again now, and I guess that will make some of you very happy. But before I dive in, let me just remind you that you can always check out my Coffee and Patreon membership pages if you want to support my journey into rock music. Um, you will find things there such as Jimi Hendrix and The Beatles and Eagles, things which I cannot put on YouTube due to copyright issues with the copyright owners, as well as early access to things which will eventually come here on YouTube. But before I go to read what Vlad has prepared for me, facts about the song, I want to tell you that I have a personal commitment to never promote a product which I would not feel good about using myself. Never. Because everything that you find on this channel has always been, and will always be, the best that I can offer, and that includes being my genuine self. Now, today I would like to show you an interesting product, but before I do, I want to be very clear that the company didn't pay me a cent for this ad. They offered me the product, and I have decided to share it with you because I do enjoy it. Well, you know, we just returned from Europe and one of our stops was Italy. We spent time in Tuscany and Firenze and Pisa. Now, Valencia is an Italian, actually Tuscany-based company, which I understand to be generations old, which is dedicated to producing high-quality leather seating, including couches. And they do. Combining wood and leather, simplicity and style, they manufacture some interesting products, one of which is here. What do you think? Do you like it? I do. I think it beautifully suits my teaching space, and it goes well with both the piano and with the harps. But of course, the next question is, how does it feel? Well, if I were to use just one word, I guess I would probably choose relaxed. A little texture, just enough so that it feels natural. The leather is not very soft, but soft enough to make me feel comfortable. And in fact, I like the firmness of it because it feels supportive under me, which allows me to really relax into it. And I do feel relaxed. Maybe too relaxed for teaching. I haven't tried that yet, but comfortably relaxed for study and work here. I like it. I, I really do. So take a look at their website. I did, and I also saw some theater seats as well. Well, if they ever send me one of those, I'll let you know how I feel about it. But the sofa? I would say that if you need one, you should certainly consider getting an Italian one. Now back to the Rolling Stones. Well, the song I'm listening to today is Gimme Shelter. And um, it is written by Jagger Richards. It is the opening track on their 1969 album, Let It Bleed. The song covers the brutal realities of war, including murder, rape, and fear. Sounds rather appropriate for this day and age, doesn't it? It features prominent guest vocals by American singer Mary Clayton. American author, music journalist, and cultural critic Greil Marcus, writing for Rolling Stone magazine at the time of its release, praised the song, stating that the band has never done anything better. Gimme Shelter has placed in various positions on many best of and greatest lists, including that of Rolling Stone magazine. And in 2021, Gimme Shelter was ranked at number 13 on Rolling Stone's list of the 500 greatest songs of all time. It is also ranked number one on the magazine's list of the band's best songs. Ultimate Classic Rock put the song at number one on their top 100 Rolling Stones songs and number three on their top 100 classic rock songs. According to acclaimed music, it is the 34th most celebrated song in popular music history. Well, then it's about time for me to discover it. That's an 
interesting opening for a song about war uh, with such a topic because this little creaky noise that I'm hearing in here at first I thought does it sound like a frog no cricket no it sounds like somebody sitting in a rocking chair on their front porch and well I'm just getting into this I, d I don't know what's coming so I shouldn't read too much into it yet but somehow it put this idea in my mind of, of, well, the title, Give Me Shelter, of somebody, it, it's as if it's setting a very peaceful scene before it gets torn apart by warfare. The plucked guitar sound, the kind of laid back, easygoing music, this little creak, it could be a chair squeaking as somebody is rocking on the front porch or in the living room, something like that. It just has a very natural, homey, homey feel to it at the very beginning. Well, I don't know what's coming next, but that is the image that it created right away. It's kind of cheerful. interesting the way the music is developing the it's it's really very repetitive um so far as we're getting into it and it morphed into something other than a peaceful scene it still isn't violent it still isn't um agonizing but it has more of a chugging motoric feeling to it that developed and and there was this point I tried to mark it and my pen was really too thin I'm going to go back and mark it and we'll go listen to this again see if we can find where it is in the music because um, this was a passage where it really started to shift and kind of carry us into the next musical phase and This, the, the lyrics, a storm is threatening my very life today. I guess, I guess it, it suits the lyrics, this idea of portraying a comfortable life at the beginning, something that has not been disturbed. Um, but then, okay, let's back up a little bit. <laughs> Just before the verse comes, we have this shift from 
da da ba 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 da ba 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 and yes it's growing a little bit more kind of nearing becoming closer in sense of proximity but then right in here we suddenly start feeling this bum 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 and it 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 darkens a bit it becomes heavier um almost as if it's portraying the inevitability of what is coming that here we are we're sitting in our life do, going about our da daily activities and then um a storm is threatening and and even before those words come in in the melody we feel the music shift a bit and become a bit more ominous a bit more inescapable as well things are closing in around us and uh, the music itself hasn't really changed the notes i mean it's still pretty much the same melody the same riff the same rhythmic quality but it has to do with how the instrumentation is balanced and the bass that's being added the drums becoming a bit more prominent and the way the sonic quality shifts and changes over that let's let's listen to it just once more and then we'll go into the verse again <laughs> getting a sense of the the feeling of inevitability that this music is is conveying that uh, well the lyrics I see the fire is sweeping across our streets today it burns like a red coal carpet mad bull lost its way it's not really angry music it's not it's not carrying that message that that side of war it's not the battle itself it's more the inevitability and the inescapability for those who find it find themselves in its path and it awakens our sympathy to their plight it really does because just as we are swept along by this music and and carried forwards by this pulse and this rhythm and it grows stronger and more persistent and it it doesn't allow us any other place to go well it's a sort of portrayal of what so many find themselves facing they're, they're facing this situation that they really have no way of escaping. They have, they have no means to get out of its path. It is, 
it's just a shot away. It's 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 like a mad bull that's lost its way. It's there there. It's trouble. And at the same time, at least so far in this in this song, and I don't know how it will end yet, but so far, it keeps a sort of distance, emotional distance. It's not grabbing us and pulling us into a sort of maelstrom of, of fighting and conflict. And so it effectively makes us see, even if we've never felt. And one of the things I've been thinking about recently is how incredibly privileged many of us have been in our lives. So many of us have never stepped foot inside a conflict zone. Many of us have never even had a war enter our nation in our entire lifetime. And that is very much a rarity, I guess, when you think about history in, throughout the ages, as well as many parts of the world, even in this modern era, and especially today. And so this song is kind of setting us up to do two things. First, to feel empathy and to to have some sympathy and empathy for those who find themselves facing this wild bull. As well as this refrain, it's just a shot away. Those of us who have been privileged enough to live in such a, in such a peaceful environment our entire lives, we tend to go about our lives not even thinking that something could ever enter our experience like that. When really, for all of us, it's just a shot away. It's a, peace is a very fragile thing. It's a very precious, precious experience that I think we take, too gr we take for granted way too often. And this reminds us that all of us, no matter where we are in the world, no matter what our experience has been, it just takes one shot and it's shattered. Let's keep going here. Interesting guitar sound. Hear the drums stepping up again here. darkening again and bringing us in again. which, well, a song like this, it's pretty much the same melody of each verse. It's, it's not a piece of music that is it's, it's a strophic song. It has a verse that repeats the same melody multiple times. But I noticed how the quality changed along with the lyrics. Suddenly the voice was crying, almost screaming, um, 
as it's talking about the experiences, the brutalities that one faces in a war zone. Rape children, murder, it's just a shot away. Those are all things that come with the brutality of warfare and the passions that run like a mad bull across the land in that scene, in that experience. And those are experiences that people are facing, have faced for so many millennia and are facing even now. It's, it's so interesting to me the way this song is kind of incredibly calm for the subject, and yet it's so eloquent about it. change of topic, but not really. We go from rape, murder, these war scenes, give me shelter I'm, or I'm going to fade away. War children, it's just a shot away. It's just a shot away. It's just like driving this into us. And then suddenly, I tell you love, sister. It's just a kiss away. What a paradigm shift. What a, what a flipping on its head. After driving all of this into us that we have to face the truth of the conflicts that are going on in this world, even if they're not at our, at our own back door. Then suddenly for all of us who are sitting here, and wondering what can we do to help the people around the world who find themselves in these situations. Well, what you can do depends very much on who you are and where you are. But the one thing that every single one of us can do is cultivate love. It's just a kiss away. It is as close to us or even closer than war itself. Well, I guess I would say you can he even have, it, it is closer because you can have love even within a war zone. War might be just a shot away, but love is just a kiss away. sound is is catching my ear because it's different from a lot of the guitar sound that I hear. It almost has a bit of a harmonica twang to it and in fact it balances with this with this voice. Uh, I don't remember who's singing. Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger. Thank you. <laughs> it balances with Mick Jagger's voice. It's as if it is his voice without the words. His voice. And the guitar. And they have the same tone quality. Maybe, 
maybe it wouldn't say harmonica. Maybe it would say a sort of muted trumpet sound. You know, when you put the mute in the in the end of the trumpet, it has this funny little buzzing sound. But somehow, it does sound like Mick Jagger's voice to me. The two of them, the guitar and the voice. And so when he sings towards the end, it's just to kiss away or anywhere in the music where where he's singing and the guitar is answering. It's as if the guitar is is reinforcing and building off of what he just sang. Not just in a um, stereotypical or or trope style customary call and response, but very deliberately and consciously supporting and building what came before. So we have the voice and then the guitar, the guitar comes and reinfo reinforces it. And then the voice comes and continues the thought. And then the guitar comes and reinforces it. And it's a really nice, really nice use of this call and response custom that we find in a lot of music and especially a lot of rock music. I, I'm kind of fascinated at how this piece of music has, I found it more appealing than, at least in this moment, than I normally find this kind of music to be. Because, well, if you listened to, if you followed my first weekend of the Rolling Stones, you found that I really wasn't attracted to Mick Jagger's voice a whole lot. And and the incredibly repetitive um, rock style doesn't, at least not yet, really appeal to me on a personal level, although I can appreciate it for what it offers. And I can appreciate the artistry and the message and the, the music of it. We all have our personal preferences and you will have noticed that it didn't grab me. Angie was different because Angie is different. But this song has somehow, somehow really kind of pulled me into it for a few moments. Well, um, of course, it might possibly be because I, well, with all the conflicts going on around the world right now and, and our awareness um, of what is happening and what so many people are facing, and for myself personally, the fact that I have a sister who is in the military overseas right now, um, these sorts of things strike very close to home to me right now. And I, I, feel, I feel for everyone who finds themselves in a conflict zone. But not only military warfare, I recognize that there are other kinds of conflicts and wars, whether it's domestic or psychological or just the daily life. Sometimes we all feel like we're a little bit overwhelmed and battling and, and we're fighting to stay alive, to keep our head above water in our daily lives. So regardless of what kind of war we find ourselves in, a piece of music like this is somehow very welcome because there's an honesty to it. And in this context of not to diminish the, the gravity of the military warfare that is going on around the world right now, but also to recognize that there are other serious conflict situations um, in this context, to look at this song and recognize who is calling to whom. 
give me shelter. Who is asking to give me shelter? A storm is threatening my very life today. If I don't get some shelter, I'm going to fade away. I'm going to get lost in this, in this hell, in this war. I'm going to, the fire is going to sweep through. It's, dis, it's in our streets. It's going to destroy me as well. Unless somebody gives me shelter. Who is this calling to? And it's calling to all of us. Anyone who has some kind of shelter to offer. For whatever kind of conflict there is that they can aid those within it. And I guess this is the um, message that I find in this song that appeals to me. And I find that the music is very simply direct and supports this message in a very, I won't say minimalistic, but somehow it feels perfectly suited because it stays out of the way. It doesn't grab our emotions and pull us in and get us all worked up about it. It simply sets the scene and then shows us the reality and then leaves us to act according to our abilities. An interesting song and actually I am happy that I found myself so engaged by it, by the message and, and connected to it as I did because it makes a point that I have strongly believed and I find many examples in many people's experiences and mine as well. But here is an example right here on camera. It doesn't matter if a certain genre, a certain style of music is not our personal preference. There are always items within that genre or that style that are perfectly suited to the topic and the message that they are meant to convey. And this is one of them. Would you call me a Rolling Stones fan now? I don't know if I could say that. I can't say that I am a fan of Rolling Stones, the band, but I can say that I have heard two songs from their work which both felt incredibly well-crafted, beautifully suited to the moment, to the, to the, what the art was meant to convey and that brought me into that world very effectively. And it's something that we should all re remember as well. Even in this idea of war and conflict, we might not love the other side. We might not be fans of the other side. But there is always something on the other side that is meaningful and valuable and to which we can connect if we remain open and willing to approach the other side with humility and to remember that love is always just a kiss away. I'll see you next time.